program is still this morning on ITV, bringing us to our first talking point here. We're going to be looking at aviation. And what you see on air is the profile of the man fit to discuss the topic for today. And of course, today we're going to be looking at some, uh, some facts about um, fan-managed fan airports in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you have seen the profile. Now let's look at him. Let's look at the very handsome young man, a licensed estate surveyor and valuer who has found pleasure, I said this last time, on issues that have to do with aviation activities and programs. They call him a non-pilot that teaches pilots. A very good day and welcome, Mr. Godwin Ike. Hi, Joe. How was your weekend? Beautiful and yours. Always. As always. Wonderful. But thank God. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, quickly, let's uh, know aviation is here and there. And there's no day that you don't have issue, issues on, on, on aviation at top. You know, on the minds of many people is the fact that air peace, irrespective of the high cost of fare, you know, the aviation fuel, the landing uh, fee and parking fee, he still squeezed out some resources to, you know, in an act of uh, uh, philanthropism, to bring back those guys from South Africa to Nigeria. Uh, what are your thoughts? How else can anybody think? This is what patriotism is all about. He's a patriot. And uh, that is a mark of a worthy man. Worth is not about how much cash you are throwing about. It's what you do with the money that, you know... And so, um, uh, you remember the American in the prison that was said to, uh, to have told Americans, stop looking for what America will do for you. Look out for what you will do for uh, you know, uh, America. Just like Joe, Joe and Godike are doling out very expensive aviation information, not just only to Nigerians, but to, to, the, to, to the world, free of charge. It takes a whole lot to put these things together. You know, um, if I tell you I had only three hours sleep last night, you would think I'm joking. But it's a whole lot of work going on behind the scene. And yet, we're giving them away for free so that our nation, our aviation department will be a, a better one. And so, it's, it, he, the, the man, Chief Onyema, understands it. And it makes sense to him that you know, he has a social responsibility. So, uh, those that are taking notes should take note, and at the appropriate time, he should be, you know, properly rewarded. I'm not saying that they should go and give him money, but there are ways of rewarding people who have distinguished themselves in the way he has done, and then uh, encourage others to come on board in doing such things. It's the only way we can build a great nation out of this country, because these pockets of activities by patriots will add up and give us the effect we are looking for. A good nation, like I always say, will never, the world remains never, fall from the skies. We've got to work at it. And so, that's um, kudos to him. Uh, I want to thank him on behalf of Nigerians and say, uh, Chief Ojema, if you're watching, we are very grateful. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you. And uh, we encourage you to continue to do good but things. To what extent do you think he can go with the evacuation? Free of charge. No, so as much as he can afford, he's not gonna he's not gonna run himself bankrupt because he wants to help. It's not the idea. The idea is do the little bit you can. For goodness sake, uh, Joe, we've got about 200 um, uh, private jets littered around the airports in Nigeria. They don't belong to Chief Onyema of uh, of Airpeace. Where are those individuals that own those private jets? We've got a lot of um, uh, men of God that own private jets. Those jets are lying there, and Nigerians are dying in South Africa. Are they expecting somebody to come beg them to, you know, uh, uh, put, uh, put crew on, on those uh, aircrafts and uh, fuel them up and run to South Africa and help to evacuate Nigerians? 
Did anybody beg Goyema to do what he's done? It's all about imbibing the culture, imbibing the attitude that works. And so, we are taking note. One day, this country will celebrate him, and very soon. And so this is also encouraging those that uh, can help. Anyone that can help in any way, please do help. These things will add up and will be described as a great nation. Okay, that being said, we are going to look at what we have on our hands this morning, which is a summary of some facts about fund managed efforts in Nigeria. Part one, this one two will be coming in series like we have always done. Okay, let's have the, the first clip. Yeah, Joe, I, I, you know, we just finished uh, dealing with um, uh, issues that had to do with uh, fan and um, with the, the role of fan. The role of fan in, in managing and securing our Nigerian airports. And right, right now, we want to see some facts about our airports, the state of these airports, the trace a little history of the, 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 uh, our airports and what's going on in there. And that will open up a few things that um, those that are uh, you know, uh, managing the, the, the airports can, can hook onto and uh, do what they do to give us better service. Mm -hmm. And so today we are going to be looking at two airports, uh, the Nam Dezikiro Airport, Abuja, and the Motala Mohammed Airport um, in, in Lagos. Of course, um, you will understand why they will be the first two uh, named after former leaders. Mm -hmm. Well and nice. And they are also cited in, in, uh, in a commercial, commercial city of Lagos and the capital city of Abuja. And so let's run quickly to clip one and uh, take it from there. Um, Joe, here we go. Um, Nandi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. Located in and serving Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, FCT of Nigeria, Namdi Azikiwe International Airport is the main airport serving the Nigerian capital city. Named after Nigeria's first president, Namdi Azikiwe, the airport is approximately 20 kilometers, about 12 miles west of Abuja. Its international and domestic terminals share a single runway. Take note of that. Known as runway 22, its non-directional beacon is 1.7 nautical miles, that's about 3.1 kilometers off the threshold of the runway. If there's anything you do not really understand and follow, always ask me questions, Joe. And the VOR DME uh, is 1.3 nautical miles, which is equivalent of 2.4 kilometers off the same runway. Built in the year 2000 and opened in 2002, the management of the airport was, in November 13, 2006, contracted to Abuja Gateway Consortium, fondly known as AGC. AGC signed a 101.1 million US dollar management contract for 25 years. Included in the contract was the construction of an Airport hotel, private car parks, that's for Abuja. Listen to this. Shopping malls and uh, uh, bonded warehouse, totaling 50 million US dollars during the first five years, and an upfront payment of 10 million US dollars. Let's quickly run to clip two so that. Um, you will see how this ended up. Are we in clip two? Yeah, but uh, before we get to clip two, yeah. uh, is a fact that uh, the uh, Abuja Airport, or in Azikiwe International Airport, has one runway for local and foreign um, flights. Which was yeah. why we had to shut down the airport some time ago mm. for six weeks in order to do a maintenance work on it. If we had two of those runways, uh, there would not have been any need to shut down the airport. 
right, right now, again, uh, another airport has been shut down, the Enugu, uh, Akano Iben Airport in Enugu. We, we just keep going on this way, and you, you want to wonder, mm. how much does it really cost to, you know, to build another runway? Yeah, the, I mean, uh, the rehabilitation of that one costs over $5 billion. Why, Joe? So the day, so the day, so the day the, government the, the wants... The costs are very, the, very high. The day government wants a proper mm. assessment mm. and a proper... Um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for now? Mm. Valuation. Mm. Proper assessment and proper valuation of some of the figures that we hear about the things we do. Uh, they know who to talk to. Mm. And they, they really know how we can get this done so that uh, those that are approving some of the figures we hear mm. would uh, so, do, do what something are you saying, in better. In a sense, are you saying that figure is outrageous? I, am, I, I cannot say that categorically. I'm only mm. saying that I hope they were properly checked because I do not believe that other nations of the world spend so much to get so little. That's the way I can put it. Mm. I don't believe... So are you saying with that amount of money would have been, been able to get two runways, one for local and the other for international? Un until, until we do a appropriate valuation and assessment. Mm. Anything you say now will be speculative. So let's hope that somebody will begin to do what is right and, uh, you know, uh, uh, and transparent. Not just being right, but transparently done. Put it to the public domain so that those who have information can come forward and help. And so, uh, rather than the under the table thing that uh, you just, somebody just comes out, gives you figures, and will say, yeah. And at the end of the day, we we'll, we'll receive just so little for the figure we had. Mm -hmm. well, Let's see how it goes. We are, we, we, we are headed to the next level, okay. and I hope I hope we're, next we're, level. We're already, take, we're already on the next uh, level. That's correct, and I hope that uh, uh, by that we'll do a few things differently. So mm. we are waiting and we are watching. Mm. So clip two quickly. Here we go, Joe. Nam Jazikiwe International Airport, Abuja continues. During the period of the AGC, you remember the, you know, the acronym AGC, you know, the, the Abuja, um, uh, what, what did we even call them at, at the time, uh, the, the consortium. Um, if, if, you remember that, Joe, don't yeah, you? Sure, the gateway, sure. the Abuja yeah, gateway yeah, consortium. Yes. Yeah. That signed, so that signed it in the, five uh, years. Yes, yeah, very, in five very, years, well. Uh, very well. To build airport and, and car parks. That's and right. To build hotels but and, and car parks. We're going to hear how they but, ended but, up. But we don't, we have not seen it. Seen All right. Hotel. But yes, we'll, we'll just hold on, hold your peace, and then let's read through clip two, and you see what's going on. During the period of the, uh, the Abuja Gateway Consortium started the AGC's management contract. The business plan had it that investments totaling 371 million US dollars would have been made had the then President Musa Yaradua not cancelled the contract. When Musa, uh, President Musa Yaradua you know, came into power, he promptly cancelled the contract, claiming that, um, or rather, based on his belief that the figures in that contract were outrageous. So he, he cancelled it. Hmm. Records have it that President Musa Yaradua revoked the contract in April 2008. That was two years after that contract was signed. Hmm. And that was... Uh, what you would, you, you, would wonder, when, when you would wonder if it took two years for uh, President Musa Yaradua to now cancel that contract. Um, these guys had signed such a huge contract and taken on responsibilities to do so much, got even an advance payment of uh, 10 million US dollars. I don't know if anybody ever looked out for where that, the, the, the money they got went into and what they had done within two years. So I can understand the feeling of uh, president, the, our late President uh, Musa Yerodoa, because I'm just imagining if I were in his shoes, I probably would have done exactly what he did. If you had such contract and had such cash down, and after two years there was nothing to show, 
Oh, come on. You must be a joker. So I, 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 I can understand what uh, uh, our late president did. Yeah, but, but, should, should, uh, you, but should, you, should it end there when no, uh, you, have right, discovered, right, just, you have discovered that what these guys have taken hold your is, peace. Is, huge, is huge and there's nothing to show? Hold your peace. Let's, let's get on and you see what, what, what happened further. That's why we are doing this summary of facts about fan managed Nigerian airports. We're going to do all of them. Even if it takes us for the rest of the year, uh, 2019, we are going to exhaust all the airports. Not, no, no one will hide under the table. Mm. So, so, yeah. so, so, so what you're saying is that we're going, to, we're going to be opening some kind of one? Hopefully. Let's, let's just be going on with this first. Before time chases us away from this, uh, because we have about six clips to go, and we're only number two. So let me run through very quickly. Uh, and I'll start again. During the period of the AGC's um, management contract, the business plan had it that investments totaling 371 million US dollars would have been made had the then President Musa Yerodua not cancelled the contract. Records have it that President Musa Yerodua revoked the contract in April 2008. Shortly after, Julius Bega Construction Company was awarded the contract of constructing a second runway for a whooping sum of 423 million US dollars. This was also revoked due to the outrageous and unacceptable cost of that contract. Nandi Azikiwe International Airport Abuja therefore went on with one runway until it became too dangerous for flying in and out. On January 4th, 2017, the Federal Executive Council upheld the Aviation Ministry's decision to close the airport for six weeks to enable repairs on the dysfunctional uh, runway. Kaduna Airport was designated as alternative airport and therefore received approval for 1 billion naira for the finishing of its new terminal. Play trip very quickly. Hmm. Still in Nandi International, um, hmm. uh, and some of that photograph you are looking at there is not hmm. very clear. But at, at the end, if we have time, we're going to play an enlarged uh, part of that photograph hmm. to see the beautiful new terminal. For those who haven't been opportunned to go to the airport to see it, hmm. Nandi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja continues. On March 8, 2017, Nigeria declared the airport closed for at least six weeks to enable the needed repairs to the runway go on. Following the completion of the project, the airport was reopened on the 18th of April, 2017. Mm. We had commended the minister that he- He kept to his word. He, he kept to his word of six weeks. Mm. He had, he had, he had um, actually insisted that he will resign if That's that correct. period comes and he's unable to And we're actually the waiting to demand that he, he, he did so if he didn't meet uh, the deadline. But he, he, he defeated yeah, everyone. Yeah, it's a, it's and a, so it's we a, congratulated a, him because yeah, we're not here to hound people. Sure, sure, we're here sure. to put you on. Sure. To do, and that is what we're better. from every other leader. If mm -hmm. you say this is what you're going to do, give yourself a target. And get it and done. Then, and then make a promise if you don't hit that target, what should, ha what should follow? That's correct. So that, that, went, that went well for Hadith Sirika, Honorable Minister. On 20th December 2018, President Muhammad Buhari commissioned a new terminal building and said to be capable of processing 50, <coughs> excuse me, 15 million passengers annually. That's what this our new terminal is capable of doing. So quickly to... Uh, Clip, Clip four, because I'm getting worried about what time may do to mm. us. We're there. Mm. Uh, uh, Motola Mohammed International Airport. Lagos. Lagos. Built during World War II and later named after Nigeria's fourth military ruler, Motola Mohammed. The airport is located in Ikeja, Lagos State, Nigeria. It is the major airport serving the entire state. Originally known as Lagos International Airport, Motola Mohammed International Airport hosted West African Airways Corporation, WAAC. Remember the one that eventually transported into Nigeria Airways? Mm. When it was formed in 1947, 
Aviation has come a long way in this country and we should be doing much better than we're doing now. It was renamed after a former military head of state, uh, Motala Mohammed, in the mid-1970s, during the construction of the new international terminal. The new international terminal, which was modeled after Amsterdam Airport Schiphol, was officially opened on 15th March, 1979. It consists of an international and a domestic terminal located about one kilometer from each other. Both terminals share the same runways. Take note of Again, that. Again, same as start of Enam Diazikiwe Airport. Why international operations moved to the new international airport, domestic operation was relocated to the Ikeja Airport. Three five, please. Are we there? <clears throat> After a fire in the year 2000, the domestic operations were moved, we're still dealing with the Motala Mohammed International mm -hmm. Airport, by the way. Mm -hmm. After a fire in the year 2000, the domestic operations were moved to the old Lagos domestic terminal. On the 7th of April 2007, a new privately funded domestic terminal known as MMA2 mm -hmm. was constructed and commissioned. During the late 1980s and 1990s, the international terminal became notorious and dangerous due to high rate of crime within and around the airport. From 1992 through 2000, the USA Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, posted warning signs in all USA international airports advising travelers that security conditions at Lagos Airport did not meet ICAO minimum standards that the International Civil Aviation mm -hmm. Organization mm -hmm. that made you uh, an expert in 2017. <laughs> minimum uh, standards. Uh, by 1993, the FAA suspended air service between Lagos and the United States of America. Apart from crime perpetrated by criminal elements, immigration officers demanded and received bribes before stamping passports. Those were some of the ugly things that went on. I'm, I mean, I'm tracing the history of how we came mm. to where we are today mm. so that our younger ones who are listening would, not, would know that... Um, and and, <coughs> and what, you are <coughs> what you are tracing are facts. Of course. Are there and, and Hard facts. Mm -hmm. Hard facts. I, mm. We're not joking here. Mm. This is really hard work we're doing. Mm. Apart from crime perpetrated by criminal elements, immigration officers demanded and received bribes before stamping passports. Why customs agents demanded payment for non-existent fees? Those were some of the ugly things that happened. They are, they are not happening anymore, by the way. But this is history we're tracing. In addition, several airplanes were attacked while taxiing to and from the terminal, and their cargo holes robbed. Those, mm. those happened in Lagos in those days. Mm. Clip six, very quickly. We're there. Uh, we're still dealing with Motola Mohammed International Airport. Security situation in Lagos began to improve when former President Olusegun Obasanjo was democratically elected president in 1999. Airport police instituted a shoot at sight policy for anyone found in the secure areas around runways and taxiways. That posture put an end to airport robberies in Lagos. In recognition of the security improvements, the FAA, that's the Federal uh, uh, Aviation, uh, I mean, um, Aviation Administration of the uh, United States of um, mm. uh, uh, America, mm. uh, in 2001, ended its suspension of direct flights to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because it got to a point that America suspended flights to Nigeria to because the of- The rate of crime. Yes, because of security issues. But in 2001, with uh, President Obasanjo coming on board and authorizing the police to institute a shoot at sight of anyone 
that was abusing uh, you know, airport um, operations. And uh, the criminals learned to save their lives by keeping away from the airports. Mm -hmm. And so FAA uh, found out that uh, things had improved and then authorized their airlines to, to, to resume, resume operation. operations in, in Nigeria and then in Lagos, by the way. So the FFA granted, um, okay, uh, right, uh, I'll take that again so that it will, will flow smoothly. In recognition of the security improvements, the FAA in 2001 ended its suspension of direct flights to Nigeria. Nine years after, precisely in 2010, the FAA granted the airport its highest safety rating. That should be given to President Obasanjo, former. Recently, the airport has been substantial, or rather has seen, recently the airport has seen substantial improvements in infrastructure such as air conditioning and conveyor belts. Mm -hmm. I agree. I've, I've flown a couple of times into that airport and I agree completely. The entire airport is currently wearing better look and many new restaurants and duty-free stores have opened. Revival of some bilateral air services agreements, uh, fondly known as BASA, saw the likes of Emirates, China Southern Airlines, Ocean Air and Delta Airlines receiving landing rights to Nigeria. Mm. Um, mm. Flash us a couple of uh, photographs you have there. And okay, let's that's, see. that's the... <coughs> okay, that's the... Uh, yeah, we've taken the, all the clips. Have the concourse and the rear view mm. of um, mm. uh, the uh, 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 Nam Zikiwe, okay. mm. uh, you know, Abuja. Yeah. Um, For anyone conversant with Abuja who knows that did the rock behind that's, that's the correct. building, is the popular Zuma rock. And this is a rare yeah. part of it where mm. airpl airplanes get attached to the concourse mm. as uh, passengers are disembarking so that mm. you don't see them. They just walk through nicely mm. into the uh, airport terminal. Mm. So let's uh, take a look at uh, what other thing. And this is the awesome, this is the awesome new terminal mm. in uh, Nandia Zikiwe, mm. Abuja. Mm. Um, this was taken you know, uh, at night. With okay. all, with all this the is ideas. also this is also credit to President Muhammad Buhari. Yes, he, yeah, he, he commissioned was, he, he commissioned he that this, this was right this a moment within, ago. Within six weeks and it was commissioned. Someone definitely set the agenda for the mm. Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika. See, so, so uh, sorry. Mm. Lagos Airport in 1969, what it looked like before all these uh, massive buildings. Mm -hmm. I, I, I dug out this photograph and I thought I should sh show them to, to our mm -hmm. viewers. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, this was way back in 1969. Yeah, but, but, but the, the um, airport that you have just um, uh, showed to us, uh, that is the uh, Nam Daziki International Airport and that of uh, Mutala Mohammed Airport. And, yeah, in, and this is the ticketing hall, the domestic wing mm -hmm. of, um, of the uh, Nam Daziki, I mean, uh, Mutala Mohammed. And, yes. then, and then here is the, the, the departure yeah. hall yeah. in the domestic terminal as well. Okay, yeah. as we are rounding up, uh, if yeah, you are we going to say something yeah, about well, agenda. Yes, yeah. yes. Someone yeah. definitely said the agenda for Hadi Sharika that, hey, Mr. Minister, mm. the runway in the Namda Ziku International Airport is not too good. And before then, we have seen many people talk about it, particularly mm. you, mm. said that you notice. What you call undulation. Undulation, undulation yes. Oh, and yes. And that the minister should fix it. As a matter of fact, I was in an did, airplane. He did fix it. Yeah. And then now we are in another phase, the next level phase. Yes. If any, what agenda would you want him? Uh, um, would you want to set for him? I would invite you to watch. Um, uh, here. We want uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me tell you this here. Here. quickly. Here. I would invite you to mm. watch Good Morning Nigeria mm. on NTA mm. tomorrow morning. Mm. 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 Let's, I am going to be like Let's there have our own to here. set agenda for mm. Honorable Minister. Mm. So be sure you keep a date mm. with Good Morning Nigeria on here, ATA. Here on right. this morning on um, TV. We have so much, like I said, we haven't mm. scratched the surface. We have so much to be done. There's no reason we shouldn't have a second runway, at least in Abuja, where you have high traffic, and Lagos, where you also have high traffic. As a matter of fact, each of them should have two more. And the advantage of that is that, especially when you locate them 
in mm. different directions. I'll tell you what the advantage is. Mm. Sometimes as you're coming f uh, for your final approach uh, um, and you notice that uh, the, the treacherous weather is playing a game at you, you may, you may find that um, uh, a, a tailwind suddenly changes to a crosswind or sometimes changes to a headwind. Whichever change you know, it spins at you, it's a problem. And if you don't uh, do the, the quick necessary adjustments, you probably will be brought down by those strong winds. So the beautiful thing about having you know, multiple runways facing different directions is that before you get to your decision altitude as you are, as you are heading, zeroed in, aligned with, with your runway and coming in, if something happens or the way the man gives you advanced information that that you know uh, uh, heading you are having is going to have some challenges you change with the permission of the uh, on the clearance of the uh, of the uh, control tower you change and then mm. make for the alignment with another wrong way mm. that puts at that time what if, order, what if another airline is coming that's why i said with clearance from the um, uh, control tower. The control tower, they see everybody. They see all traffic. And they talk to all the pilots in the air. And so, uh, that, that I was mindful of my language with clearance from, from the control tower. You can actually demand to, to now go to, if, if you, it's runway one, I'm just giving an example. You can say to them that it appears we have a strong crosswind that may uh, endanger this landing. And that crosswind, by the direction of the other runway two, may be a tailwind or a headwind from that direction. And so if that is better, you get clearance and uh, you make a loop and align yourself with, with the appropriate runway that gives you safe landing. So that's why it's highly important in order to um, increase the safety of these two major airports we have. There's, we must there's have need for more two runways. more for each of them. Okay, okay, uh, that's that's an agenda, of course, for the Minister of Aviation Hadi Surika, and of course, the much we can take on this discussion. Next week we'll do part two. I'm sure the part two we're going to look at other airports, but that's I'm right. sure that you have seen some facts about. Uh, the two airport, airports that we have shown you today. These are uh, summaries, yeah, anyway. Just, just, it's, just, it's just, 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 just yeah. summary, summary of them. Mm -hmm. And I must thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thanks, John. Thanks. We'll take a quick break. My when we come order. back.